Good afternoon, everyone. Once in a hundred year flood swept through Tasmania last week. These are what the river gorges turned into. Something that was comparable to the 1929 flood and there were 2,500 cubic meters of water per second rolling down through these gorges. This is a, a popular summer swimming spot. This is what it looks like currently. Catastrophic floods of 1929 are the only thing that's comparable. Farm animals stranded, cities covered in foam coming down the rivers, giant waves taking on ships as well as surfers. And interestingly, Hydro Tasmania has a government inquiry why they were cloud seeding the day before the flooding came. And now the government comes out and asks drone operators not to take footage of the damage. I wonder why. On June 5th, 6th, and 7th, massive storms pummeled the east coast of Australia as well as Tasmania. Look at the fronts coming through. You can clearly see tracking to the east. New Zealand's next. They call it the Trail of Destruction on the East Coast Low, and this was really a once in a hundred year storm, especially for Tasmania. They're comparing it to the 1929 Tasmanian floods. Catastrophic is the word that they're using. Now, if you're not familiar with Tasmania, it's in the far south, that further south island off of Australia there with the blue dot on it. Tassie is the nickname a few of my friends who live there call it. Look at the sea surface temperatures the last week of May. You can see near Tasmania, water's a bit warmer than it was off of Western Australia. But this is what the flood scene looked like in 29. This is what it looks like today, but they built levees to withstand a once in a 200 year storm. A few of those broke, flooding everywhere. So man's defenses against these floods are really insignificant. It shows you how much power nature has over us. Minimum $100 million, and that's before anything is even really drained off. Probably going to be creeping up toward a billion U.S. If this is any indication of what the livestock are experiencing, everything from cattle to sheep, most things in the ground are ruined or flooded out. Liffey Falls before, beautiful, tucked away, emerald green forest. This is what it looks like after the flood, if that gives you any indication of the power of the water that came through there. This is a before and after current picture here of what the gorge looks like. Can't believe people are really that close with this much flooding, but the colossal amount of water coming down there, this actually looks like a painting. But if you look under the bridge, those are class six rapids coming off of that same cataract there. It was pegged at 2,500 cubic meters per second. I don't know how they can actually measure that so precisely. But to give you an indication of the real flow of the water, you can see the normal river course. And this is what it looks like in the popular swimming hole attached to the gorge there. Downtown experiencing this much flooding to the bottom of the phone booth and it still hasn't peaked yet. What interestingly though, a lot of foam and suds are suddenly through the river basins. Looks more like ice floating down the river than it does water. And you see it again and again in all the photos. Immense amounts of foam coming down. This is what the farmland. You can imagine what the sea coastal area with gale force winds slamming waves. They were talking about 20 meter waves here. Sea swells, again, eroding coastal areas. Surfers having a ball out there. Monster waves, but check out this. Rolling over an oil tanker at 20 plus meters. Tasmania's government-owned energy company, Hydro Tasmania, is now under inquiry why they were cloud seeding before this massive front came through. They knew there was going to be so much rain and flooding anyway, but why did they cloud seed to add on top of that? Additionally, amateur drone users are being asked not to take footage of this event. There's only... One professional firm there that wants to try to shut down the amateur drones, citing that there might be dangers to helicopters. Well, you know what? The guys I've flown drones with, the range is about 1 to 1.5k out, and there's always a spotter looking. So if there's choppers coming in on a rescue effort, you can easily divert your drone down. 
so I know from a first-hand experience that this is definitely some sort of censorship by the government asking people not to, citing the possibility of taking down a helicopter with a drone. And the drone operators would clearly hear and see the chopper coming in. Just makes no sense why they don't want individuals to start capturing footage of the real damage. La Nina watch of Pacific water temperature starting to cool drastically, the biggest drop off ever recorded. You're looking for an extended Nina coming up, so you just have to go back through time. 1906, we find a really extended Nina there. Come up to 1998, 99, and we get that long extended again Nina. So we're looking at something at least as long as 1999, probably back to the 1906 era. So then we just start matching up the precipitation rainfall charts that the Met Office had on file. The match would be 1976 or 1917, one of those two. But whatever happens, La Nina always brings in wetter conditions. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. I'm really curious how the intensification of the grand solar minimum is going to add on top of this La Nina in the effect of the cooling and the length of it, both. And if you like the information presented in these types of videos, please jump over to Patreon. You can support me over there. It's my backup channel. And I'll keep information like this flowing to you pretty much on a daily basis from now on.